Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is the Chapter 18 review. Um, I haven't written this quiz yet, so I can't tell you anything about it. I know it'll probably be multiple choice. Does anybody want a pen? You? No? Okay. All right. So, origin and history of life. So, the very first thing I would probably want to remember about, besides that the Earth is not flat, is I should make that a true false question. Yeah. Um, want me to put that in there? Yes. Yeah. 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 There's more on this. Yeah. All right. Please. Please. <laughs> so remember, <laughs> come back to me. Luca. What does Luca stand for? <laughs> so wonderful. And that life would have evolved from Luca. So then we started talking about, okay, how does that happen? Well, we talked about the importance of chemical evolution that has to come before biological evolution because we have to have the ingredients we need for life to start. So we know our, our whole universe is about how old? 4.6. Universe. Here, about 14 billion years old, okay? And so about 14 billion years ago, we had our universe. How old is our Earth? 4.6 billion years old, okay? And the gases that were on early Earth were similar to those that came out of volcanoes. volcanoes. Who said that? Miller. Not Miller. Somebody else said it. Operin. Out, out the volcano, Operin, okay? Out. Okay, sorry, he's going, no, that's not going to work. So Operin said they're like gases that came out of a volcano. Those gases we know... How would you classify those gases? They were what? They were inorganic. I agree with you on that. What else could you classify them as? Reducing. Reducing is great because it's conducive to what? Building. Building, right? We live in a what kind of environment now? What happens if you bite your apple and you set it down for 10 minutes? What happens to the apple? It starts to turn brown. It's oxidizing. The oxygen in the air is interacting with your apple and turning your apple brown. It is in an oxidizing environment. It tends to break things down. Early Earth was a reducing environment. Okay, Early Earth, with its inorganic molecules, it didn't have any monomers yet, no blocks yet. So we had to go from the inorganic to the organic. The gases that came out of that volcano um, were more than likely something like this, okay? And the energy that was around on that early Earth, things like the sun, UV radiation, did we have an ozone layer yet? No. How do you know? There's no free oxygen. No free oxygen. Because there's oxygen in water, right? In water, it could exist at all three states, yes? Okay, so we have energy from the sun. We get all kinds of UV radiation because there's no ozone layer. What else do we have? Lightning. We have lightning, we have molten magma, and we have radiation, right? Breakdown of isotopes. That energy could have potentially taken those inorganic molecules and combined them together to form organic molecules. And remember, we talked about the building blocks right here, okay? These inorganic gases right here, if given the right energy, could make these building blocks, sugars and amino acids. And that's what Oprah hypothesized. And then somebody came along and said, I will do an experiment and see if I can reenact that. Who was that person? Miller. Miller. And Miller did that experiment, and within a week's time, he got these sugars and amino acids and fatty acids. So now we have some organic building blocks, some bricks to work with. What would be another way we could have gotten those organic molecules if not using the energy from early Earth like that? How else? Tell me. Oh, iron sulfur world, it could have come out of what? Hydrothermal vents. I agree with you. And what's the third way that's hypothesized? Extraterrestrial, right? We got seeded from some asteroid or meteorite. Hey, and that's how we got our organic material. But now that we have our monomers, nine, ten to one, she's gonna come out with chocolate. I'm gonna take it out of my cabinet. Is she doing it? She probably is. I love her. <laughs> and so then we're gonna take our organic molecules and we need to take those monomers and oh thank you. 
we need to take those monomers and use them to build what? Polymers. See, she said, no chocolate? No, I was just, you I were just printing? Something. Well, I, I printed something, but I didn't color. Is it, am I on a paper? No, I checked. Oh, okay. I'll check it. So um, now to build these proteins, these carbs, lipids, and nucleic acids, do you remember we talked about the, like, who came first? Who were the two we are really concerned about? Proteins and nucleic acids. Why? Okay, so, so proteins act generally as what? Enzymes. Enzymes facilitate reactions. So you would think, oh, I need proteins. Yeah, proteins first. Who said proteins first hypothesis? Fox, right? Fox said protein first. Then other scientists say, you know what though? We need nucleic acid of some sort first because that's our code. But not just any nucleic acid, what's been hypothesized, which nucleic acid? RNA, RNA because that's what we translate. And also RNA can act as a what? Catalyst. As a catalyst. So maybe RNA came first. Or Karen Smith said that came simultaneously on the surfaces of what? Clay. Okay. So once we have our proteins, carbs, and nucleic acids, or maybe they were built by just the energy we had still in the earth, right? Our radiation, all of that, molten magma, and those monomers would become polymers. And those polymers, as water evaporated out of puddles, they would be more concentrated. And we know when hot proteins cool, who said that? Fox. You could form those protonoid microspheres, those spheres of protein. And Oprin said, well, there are also those fat droplets, those classervit droplets that are made out of fat. Well, we know right now our own cell membranes are a combination of fats and proteins. So maybe somehow those combined and that created our early barrier of a protocell. Once that protocell could replicate itself and pass its genetic code on and make more cells, then we have a true cell. And that first true cell was probably what? A prokaryote or a eukaryote? Prokaryote. prokaryote. Autotroph or a heterotroph? Heterotroph. heterotroph. And later, oh, autotrophs evolved, right? And that was during the, during the oxygen revolution. Right? And remember I had you watch that video, right, about how oxygen then on that early earth would be considered a deadly, deadly toxic poison. But those few who could withstand the presence of oxygen, right, after you became snowball earth, those few that could withstand that, they would even harness the energy of that oxygen to do what kind of respiration? Well, cellular better have been already going on, but anaerobically, but you would do aerobic respiration, right? And aerobic respiration would make that you could have more energy for each molecule of glucose you burn. And we've got, when we have oxygen present, then we must have evolved non-cyclic photophosphorylation, right? Where water is split, right? So that's already evolved. Now that we have oxygen, we can do aerobic respiration now, and now we can go from being unicellular to what? Multicellular, okay? And once the oxygen is on the earth, now we can have a what kind of layer? Ozone. Ozone layer, which protects us from UV radiation, so we can move out of the earth and up onto land. And now we have all kinds of areas we can exploit on land. Adaptive, and maybe we have a few colossal massive what? Extinctions, due to different things. What kind of things could cause our massive extinction? What? I, I didn't hear you. Climate change. Climate change, yes. Carbon dioxide level, continents shifting around, meteorites hitting right the planet and spreading up dust and blocking up sunlight so you just can't keep supporting those large um, 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 herbivores anymore, right? So there could be collapses and then expansions of new kinds of life as a result of that. All right. So let's just hit a couple pictures on that first cell is prokaryote. So I'm just gonna run through the pictures real quick so you can see it as a review. Miller, right, he did the experiment. Um, we talked about hydrothermal vents being a source of organic nutrients or seeded by 
a meteor, then this should be a summary now. We said, okay, we got the monomers, how do we build the polymers? So protein first, right? RNA first, or at the same time with clay. Um, we looked at Fox with his protein. We um, looked at the RNA first, and then eventually a protocell, that early cell just has to have some sort of barrier that's kind of blocking what's going on the inside from the outside. Um, Fox's protonoid microspheres, operins, crossorbit droplets. We've already reviewed this. At first, what kind of respiration will we have? Anaerobic, good, and later aerobic. Okay, take a look at this. This should be a good summary chart, right? How, how did you pass that information on? So RNA first, protein first, or did it happen at the same time? We know that our central dogma is this now. We know it goes DNA to RNA to protein. But it's hypothesized in the past that it went from, started all with RNA. RNA. Yeah, and that DNA was just a way to store the RNA information. Because if you think about it, RNA is what actually gets translated into a protein. So DNA could just be a nice storage way. And maybe if we store it there and there's a m way to mess with how it's stored, like through mutations or genetic recombination, through the process of meiosis, right? Crossing over, right? Independent assortment, random fertilization. Then we can mess with how we store it so when we bring it back out again as RNA, we get some new proteins, right? And remember when we watched the Evo Devo video and it kind of reinforced that idea, just take the same genes and use them differently or allow them to express themselves for longer amounts of time or shorter amounts of time and just manipulate that code in that way, okay? And then from that RNA, you would then build those proteins. So we talked about the evolution of the genetic code. Um, all right. So then that brought us up through life. And then we started going, okay, let's study, yes? With the Evo Devo video, are you talking about the Fox genes? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, so then we said fossils tell a story, and then we use this to help in our mind to give us perspective on how much of, when we look at our geologic time scale, is all pre-Cambrian, right? And if I was going to, you don't even need to look up there because you already are going to remember this because we've talked about it before, right? Yeah. So when did the pre-Cambrian period start? Four point six billion years ago, my friends. Because what started then? Earth. Earth. So just get it in your head, right? Earth started, okay? Four point six billion years ago. About a billion years happened, and everything we just reviewed to get us our first what? Cell. Okay. And in there, we got some oxygen revolution coming up. We have prokaryotes evolving into eukaryotes using the so symbiotic hypothesis, right? Mitochondria and chloroplasts coming to live inside of other prokaryotes. So now the pre-Cambrian period ends about how long ago? Now you're 542, okay, is what you're coming up with. And that's about what time? Dinner time. Dinner time. We're working our way backwards, right? So at the start, when we leave pre-Cambrian, now we are entering what era? Old and pale, Paleozoic. Precambrian, right? Then Paleozoic. Now, at the beginning of Paleozoic, plant wise, what did we have when we started the Paleozoic era? We just had what? Algae. algae. But during the Paleozoic era, algae would evolve all the way up to what? Glycosperms. Close. Gymnosperms. Gymnosperms. Which are like Christmas trees or Hanukkah bushes, right? Okay. Animal wise, at the beginning of Paleozoic, we're just what? Invertebrates. And from that, we probably had some insects that had an exoskeleton. And then we had not invertebrates, but what? Vertebrates. And then fish, and from fish, amphibians, and from amphibians, reptiles. I don't know how to do it. Okay. So we end with early reptiles and early gymnosperms, and what time is it? Not 542, but 250 schools out, right? So 248, 251, it's all in that range, right? That's 
248 million years ago. Ago, okay? So now we leave the Paleozoic era, and now we're going to enter the Mesozoic era. Mesozoic era in the middle. It starts with early reptiles, then reptiles gain ascendancy, and right in the middle of the Mesozoic era is the movie, what? Jurassic period. And that's when we had, what? Dinosaurs. And the Mesozoic era ends with the beginnings of early mammals, okay? Yeah, I'm careful. And then when we look at plants, we start with early gymnosperms, but then we end with early angiosperms. Okay, and now what time is it when it's the end of the Mesozoic era? 65 million years ago, which is our speed limit, right? So now we enter into the Cenozoic era, and we go from early mammals to man. man. And we go from early angiosperms to herbs. Herbs, exactly. Okay, now work your way backwards from here. Now, 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 what era are we in? Cenozoic. Cenozoic, and that goes back to how many? 65. Good, then we're in the Mesozoic, and that goes back to how, what time? 248, and we're in the millions, right? Then we enter the Paleozoic, and that goes back to? And everything below that goes all the way back to the start of the Earth 4.6 billion years ago, right? So when we said fossils can tell a story, we talked about all the different types of fossils there are. And we said that geologic time scale that you and I just ran through, that was developed due to absolute dating and? Relative. And relative dating can use things like this, an index fossil, like trilobites, because they're only found at a certain time. So you know any rock layers before that time would be older and any rock layers above that trilobite index, index fossil would be what? Younger. And then you can use absolute dating, and that's going to be related to breakdown, right, of isotopes. Oh, that's good. We're still, we're still recording. Okay, and look right here, tree of life. Look at the numbers that they have on there. Do you think that means anything? Okay, and that's a good little review that you have in your book, okay? We've already reviewed this. We didn't talk about this, dermatolites. Remember, that's that bacteria and the slime and the sand and then the calcium carbonate in the water, and then it's like looking back through time if you cut into one of those, right? Okay? Um, we talked about the ozone layer. We talked about the endosymbiotic hypothesis. Here's a simplified version, but you already know all of that. Um, we talked about mass extinctions. Um, molecular clock. This is when you don't measure in minutes, but you measure in mutations. mutations. Because you know about the rate of mutations, so you can know how long they diversified from each other. Okay? Um, how many mutations have they accumulated? If we went on two different pathways, evolutionary pathways, we'll have some things that are exactly the same and then we'll count up how many differences we have and at what pace do we accrue those differences, then I know how far back we, our, our paths diverged. Does that make sense to you? Okay, um, so this in a nutshell is what era again? Paleozoic. Algae all the way to gymnosperms, early gymnosperms and invertebrates all the way to early reptiles. Okay, then we talked about the Mesozoic era Reptiles gain ascendancy, gymnosperms gain ascendancy, and we even have the early mammals and early angiosperms. Okay, and then we get into the Cenozoic era. We have our primates and man. Okay, then the last little bit we talked about is looking at things like continental drift. And this kind of takes us back full circle because we're going back into your last year class and when we talked about um, the third rock unit, and we talked about how the continent and the plate shift, we talked about subduction zones, and you know what subduction zones, you can get what? Volcanoes. And what do you call it when two plates come together? Convergent, Convergent boundaries. boundaries. If there are two continental plates, you could build mountains. mountains, and you see that. And from that, the continents moving around, we have evidence for evolution and biogeography, but that's why you see similar 
um, fossil species at that time and you have unique um, like mammalian species because the continents were all separated at that point because when the continents were apart that was 65 million years ago and that's right when mammals were diversifying so they couldn't just hop over to another continent even something like North America and South America were connected North America and South America but what's between us that makes us like two islands yeah, not just Central Mexico, America. farther south, but with, you, yeah, you, in Central America you have really high mountains, and so it's almost like we are two islands, right? So many things I'm seeing right now. Okay, then we talked about mass extinctions and the causes of those mass extinctions, and then um, the last but not least, like we threw in some other key words that would be appropriate. Evo Devo, I think, is easy for you to get. Evolutionary biology and development. Exaptations, meaning I had this adaptation for this one thing, but I used it for something else. Just like wings on birds are normally used for what? Flying. Flight. But a penguin uses them for swimming. swimming. Okay. Um, we talked about changing the rate, controlling the rate of when certain genes are expressed. And as a result, you get different structures and homeotic and Hox genes, regulatory genes, and then this, this one right here, changing when they're turned on and off, the switches, has a big impact in how that trait is um, expressed. And that is the end. I'm very proud of you. We did it even before three. Do you want me to go back through and do some of the questions from the chapter? Okay, let's do it. Wait, what did I do here? Oh. Uh, I'm finding, I'm trying to find some questions, hang on. If you see questions, oh, I see them. Here we go. I'm going to put you on pause while we do this, and then I'll turn it back on when we do the answer. So hang on. This will be a nanosecond for you. Did you get this right? Yes. How did you miss this? Today's environment is not reducing. How are you missing this? Today's environment is what? Oxidizing. Good. Number three. Hi. Are you going to our meeting? I just got invited to a basketball game. They're doing teacher appreciation. I know. I, I couldn't go to it. I said no. I feel guilty. See, you're very loving. Okay, you got that one right. Okay, bye, love you. Um, and you got that one right. And I don't know, these are just probably people from the last class. Looks like you got those all right. Okay, you ready to do another one? Yes or no? Okay, I'm finding another one. Tell me if you see it, because I'm not seeing one. Okay, okay. Okay, here you go. Okay, I'm pausing you again. Okay, here we go. Yay! You all got that because these 10 people are not here. Oh. Stop for a minute. What's the key word other than angiosperms? First. First. First evolve. Okay, first evolve. At the beginning or the end of the Mesozoic era? End of the Mesozoic era. It's when they first evolved. Yay, everybody got that. Yay. 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 That was it. You're super smart. Thank you. Have good weekends. Make good choices. Love you. And have a piece of toast.